Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums as Promised. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, short but really good discography of a progressive metal band early on. You can call them a progressive death metal band in more recent years. They're basically just a progressive metal band. Uh, that incorporates elements of prog and fusion and ambient music. Of course, I'm talking about Cynic. C-Y-N-I-C. So here's the deal. They've got a kind of uh, complicated recorded history. So their first album came out in 1993. They never made it to their second album. Shortly thereafter, they wound up breaking up after the first album and uh, went away for many, many years. Then they've been a little bit more regular with putting out albums in since their reformation they've had a couple tragic deaths in in the lineup over the last couple of years especially and but they have decided to continue on with some new members they've got four full-length studio albums they have a fifth one which is basically just instrumental versions of song of the fourth album so we won't be covering that they have two eps one contains reworkings of stuff from their second album. We won't be covering that. And then the other EP has a couple of unused ambient tracks, one reworking of an older track. Anyway, it's so yeah, I'm not going to cover those. Uh, they're cool for what they are, but we're mainly talking about the four full-length albums here. So, And there are four of them. And uh, I will say <clears throat> there's not a dud here at all. These are all well worth your time, but obviously there are a couple that are better than the others, I think, in my mind. So I have three of the four on in physical copy, so I'll be showing them. I really thought I had the other one, but uh, I can't seem to find it. So for whatever reason, I guess uh, one of those things that I reviewed, listened to, put in my iPad, the uh, digital version, and just never got around to buying the physical copy. Very strange. So anyway, let's start with number four. Uh, and again, this band, just a little bit of history, burst on the scene in 1993, uh, playing in a style, you know, the, uh, kind of like the Florida death metal, <clears throat> the death metal style. And a lot of bands from the Florida scene at the time were starting to incorporate elements of uh, progressive rock and jazz fusion in their music, uh, making like a highly technical form of extreme metal that had very sophisticated, challenging musical passages and arrangements with the death metal growls and in this band they mixed death metal growls with clean vocals and especially early on you had the clean vocals which were infiltrated with vocoder right that kind of synthesized robotic uh, elements that you can add to vocals and it's made for a very interesting thing they when they reformed they kind of went back into that briefly but now they basically are they use all clean vocals and uh, the vocals are actually really, really well done. There's always a spaciness to the vocals. So this band, very, very different from almost any other extreme metal band you will ever hear. Although, like I said, they haven't really been doing extreme metal for quite some time. So they're really, they're not all about that anymore. So I'm going to go with number four. I'm going to go with their most recent full-length studio album, Ascension Codes. Okay. So this is on uh, Season of Mist Records. So this was an album, I think, when this came out, kind of surprised a lot of us because they lost Sean Malone and Sean Reiner, their great bass player and drummer who both died within, like, what, 10, 11 months of each other in 2020. So here you have, uh, this is the last one they've done to date, Paul Masvidal, who is basically the leader of the band. He's their guitarist and, and vocalist. Uh, here he's joined by Dave McKay on bass, and synthesizer and other keyboards and Matt Lynch on drums along with some uh, other guests on various things lead guitar and backing vocals and stuff like that uh, there's lots of tracks on here it's nearly 50 minutes worth of music and uh, despite the absence of both Sean Malone and Sean Reinert uh, this still sounds like a Cynic album. That that was the amazing thing when I first heard this. I was like, because I really I was shocked that that uh, that Paul was going to continue on with the band, but he did. And then you listen to it, and I'm like, it still sounds like a Cynic album. Uh, it has the spaciness. It has the soaring clean vocals. It's got the mix of complex riffs and blazing jazz fusion lead guitar solos. Uh, the busy bass, nimble drumming, loads of atmosphere. That's what this band at their core is all about. Um, 
Are there too many like kind of dreamy interludes on here? Yeah, there are. Uh, I think trimming this album by like 10 or 15 minutes would have made this a much tighter album. But there's still plenty of stuff to love uh, in between all the little <clears throat> interludes and spacey things that are spattered about. So I think, you know, nestled in here is a really good like kind of 40, 35, 40 minute album. <clears throat> and it's really well done. Like I said, it sounds like a Cynic album. Obviously, the, the shorter, more realized tracks work work the best. But, you know, to me, this is easily the weakest of the Cynic albums. But it's still really, really good. You know, I think uh, I think I gave this a four out of five star, right? So, But it could have been higher uh, if it would have been tightened up just a little bit. So that comes in at number four. That's Ascension Codes. Uh, number three, again, is the one that I don't have the hard copy of. I'm going to have to pick that up. <coughs> Excuse me. Early in the morning, man. Uh, the 2014, uh, and Ascension Codes is from 2021, by the way. Uh, Kindly Bent to Free Us is from 2014. That is their third album. That is my number three. This is the last album with both Sean Malone and Sean Reinert. Again, like I mentioned, both uh, you know left the band, and uh, they both died in 2020, like not long from each other, very young too. Uh, so here they join Paul Masvidal on this in what would be kind of like a trio album, the first just trio album. Uh, all, all clean vocals on this album, and this album is far removed from anything that could be called death metal or extreme metal. Highly melodic. Total progressive rock metal fusion inspired throughout. Uh, I really like the song True Hallucination Speaks, which to me sounds like a heavier version of early 80s King Crimson with like a slice of porcupine tree thrown in. It's a pretty cool song. The Lion's Roar goes from all out metal and atmospheric to full throttle metal. Really love that. Great emotional vocals on that particular one. Really busy bass lines. The bass work is always top notch on these albums. And uh, on the title track, you have a complex blend of prog and fusion. Great guitar textures and solos. I mean, the, the guitar work on these albums is just really richly layered. Lots going on. Really, really good stuff. Uh, you have the moody Infinite Shapes. Uh, Moonheart Sunhead is kind of quirky, kind of busy. You know, I think... Uh, the chorus has a nice hook to it, I think, to my ears anyway. I'm thinking that like Porcupine Tree fans would really love some of this stuff here. Um, really good guitar solo in here as well. You got uh, Gitanjali, or however they say that. Uh, it's kind of more of a technical metal track. It's a good one. Melodies are still there, though. It's still kind of catchy. Holy Fallout, <clears throat> for me, has its moments, but it kind of meanders a tad. It's one of my least favorites on the album. And then uh, the album ends with Endlessly Bountiful, uh, which is kind of mellow. Again, not one of my favorites. I think this album kind of loses steam a little bit on the back end. But there's some really nice uh, acoustic guitar passages to close out the album, which is cool. Overall, I think it's a really strong album. And, uh, you know, it's really cool to see that just kind of down to a trio had, had not stopped their creativity at all, which is not surprising because these three guys, you know, just amazing, amazing musicians and songwriters. So let's move on to number two. So one and two was really tough for me. I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you ask me again tomorrow, I might uh, change my mind and go the other way. But for now, I'm going to go with uh, 2008's Traced in Air. Look at that cover, right? Gorgeous stuff. This is their second album, first in 15 years. When this dropped, I think most of us were kind of like, yes, they're back, and this does not disappoint. Paul Masvidal, of course, leading the charge on vocals, guitar and guitar synthesizer, Sean Ryder on drums, Sean Malone on bass and Chapman Stick, and then uh, you got Time on uh, Crudenier on guitar and Death Growls. Um, and then Amy Correa on backing vocals uh, makes up the lineup this time around. So here, uh, a mix of unused ideas from the mid-90s, which I guess they never used for that talked about second album in the mid-90s, along with brand new material. And I think the music here is mostly atmospheric progressive metal with still a lot of those fusion elements and just a trace of the death metal element. And that's mostly due to uh, the vocals, all right? So... Um, you got uh, the space for this is simply gorgeous, highly complex in spots, small use of death metal growls underneath the clean main vocals. That's kind of how this album operates. You get the death growls are not used on their own for the most part. They always seem to be they're layering the clean vocals and then the death growls underneath. So they're kind of understated. I honestly not sure why they bothered. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, 
you know, were they really needed? I don't know. It's almost like they were. They wanted to make sure they still grabbed in those fans from the early 90s and incorporated some of that. And again, some of this material was written back in the 90s. So maybe it was these songs, some of these songs were originally conceived to have both the clean and the growling vocals. That's part, I think that's part of it. Um, what else? Uh, Sean Reiner's drumming is phenomenal on this album. Absolutely amazing. Uh, you got a song, uh, in turn, Integral Birth, Another stunning piece of music. Bass and drums are just absolutely off the charts. Nice guitar work. Again, the understated growls, to me, just aren't needed, but I, I like the use of the female vocals here. Um, complex and really heavy song, Evolutionary Sleeper. Really like that one a lot. Uh, Adam's Murmur is nice and atmospheric, kind of spacey. You got the Unknown Guest, which is just absolutely soaring and melodic, haunting, clean, and growling vocals. Blazing guitars cool kind of stop start complex quirky arrangements and shifting time signatures you got the real spacey uh nunk stands and then you have a closer uh, king of those who we who know which is another highly progressive track nice use of atmosphere nice technical elements and here the growls work more on their own than they do on the rest of the al uh, album instead of just kind of like sitting there underneath the clean vocals overall I think, musically speaking, this one might be even more impressive than my number one, which is the debut. Um, but like I said, I think they added the growls more to appease the original fans and kind of in keeping you know, with the original spirit of when these, some of these tracks were originally written. Uh, on some songs, they don't really fit. They, well, it's not that they don't fit. They just don't seem like they're all that necessary. But again, they don't detract from it. So if you don't mind it, um, it's an absolute stunner of an album. It really is. And like I said, I went back and forth. This was my number one, then my number two. I kept going back and forth. Ask me again. I might I might tell you different. But uh, it, this is a great, great album that I think really for today anyway is only being bested by their debut from 1993, which is called Focus. Debut album, Roadrunner Records, Paul Masvidal, vocals, guitars, guitar synth, Jason Goble, guitars, guitar synth, Sean Malone, bass, Chapman Stick, Sean Reinert, drums, and Tony Teagarten, on the death growls i mean jaw dropping musicality you got the blending of the clean vocoder dripping uh, vocals with t garden's death metal growls you got jazz fusion bass lines fluid lead guitar solos right there totally come from the school of like mclaughlin and holdsworth and uh, you know dimiola and John Goodsall, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's just that's these guys just fully embrace their prog and fusion roots. Um, the music's the, the drumming is off the charts, very nimble and just all over the place, just really technical. Uh, the music's spacey, it's technical. Um, it doesn't really sound much at all like traditional death metal. Say you know, save for some of the heavy riffing in spots and the growls, obviously. But this is really technical stuff. But just beautiful riffs, even though at, at spots the riffs are really crushingly heavy. They're gorgeously uh, arranged. And again, the kind of like the the complexity of the music, and then the going back and forth from atmospheric to brutal to blazing fusion, right to prog to space rock. I mean, it's just the the transitions on these songs are great. I mean. The classics on here, Veil of Maya, tremendous song, a classic of progressive death metal. I mean, it's just uh, the fusion bits are amazing. <clears throat> the crushing sections are amazing. Celestial Voyage is of a similar nature. I mean, these two kind of kick off the album in, in an amazing way. Uh, the way they layer the clean vocals and the growls, they you know they work really well together. Um, blazing lead guitar work, just absolutely stunning. The Eagle Nature. Beautiful at times, savage at others. Sentiment is more straightforward prog rock with some fusion elements. Sean Malone's bass work is just absolutely off the charts here. Uh, I'm But a Wave 2 has some crushing death metal moments, but man, the lead guitars are absolutely stunning and just gorgeous. Just amazing stuff here. Uh, Reinhardt's drums, just sublime. Euroboric Forms is technical death metal at its very best. You know, you can't tell me a band like Obscura didn't worship the ground that Cynic walked on, right? Man, I mean, all the all the foundation of so many of those tech death bands that we see today comes from here. Uh, you got Textures, which is a fantastic instrumental that reminds me of uh, King Crimson. Okay, if King Crimson won Fusion, there you have it. Um, and I said it on our albums that are 30 years old show the other day that I featured this one. I mean, if these guys did a full-on 
instrumental fusion prog album, it would be absolutely dynamite because they could do it easily. Uh, and then you have the closer, How Could I, is one of the heaviest songs on the album. It's got venomous growls and big shifting riffs. This is a true classic in every sense of the word. Uh, my only slight complaint for this album, I think they went a little overboard on using the vocoder over the clean vocals, right? Because it gives this like kind of like robotic thing, which I don't mind on a song or two, but to have it on most of, because, you know, Paul's got a really nice voice, I think. So I, I think it kind of takes away a slightly. But other than that, that's my one main quibble. Like I said, if you are interested in exploring the Cynic catalog, I would say don't waste any time. Go and listen to these. Get a hold of these if you can. These are absolutely fantastic. And uh, But really, there's no stinker here at all. Like I said, all four of them are, are quite good. But the two, the cream of the crop, are these two right here. So I'm going with Focus, number one. Trace Denair, number two. Kindly Bent to Free Us, number three and Ascension Codes number four. So basically, I went in the order that they were released. Kind of weird, that does happen sometimes. But uh, they're all good, but these are my two favorites, easily. So go check them out. Let us know what you think. If you already are a fan, please rank them in the comments below. And uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please stay tuned for another episode of Ranking the Albums coming up next Sunday. Till then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. Stay tuned for the Hudson Valley Squares coming up tomorrow. We should also have Curse of the Collector coming up tonight. And uh, lots more stuff happening this week, including Monsters Den and uh, new album reviews. we got new Enslaved, new Angel, lots of cool stuff coming this week. So uh, stay tuned for that. And, uh, of course, Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff. And then before you know it, you blink. We'll be back here on Ranking the Albums next Sunday. Not quite sure what that will be yet. Got a couple that I'm working on, so we'll see which one I'm most ready for for you next week. So till then, take care. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>